Hey guys, today I want to answer the question, how much of Resident Evil 4 can you beat without guns? Resident Evil 4 gives you many weapons throughout the game. You get multiple shotguns, pistols, magnums, and many more weapons. But what if we said no to all of that and tried to get through the entire game without guns? How much of the game would even allow for this kind of playstyle? Well that's what I'm going to find out. Before we get started, let's go over the rules. For rule one, we are not allowed to use any kind of firearms. That means no pistols, shotguns, magnums, snipers, the TMP, RPGs, or mine throwers. So what are we allowed to use? The options are pretty limited, but we can use eggs, grenades, melee attacks, and our knife. For rule two, we are playing on normal difficulty, which seems like a pretty fair challenge as there's no way I'm going to be able to beat this on like professional or anything. So now that the rules are out of the way, let's get into it. After walking along the forest trail, we break into an innocent man's home and immediately start interrogating him about the location of the president's daughter. He instead decides to try and plant an axe right in my face and let me tell you, I wasn't having it. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. We bait his axe swing and then quickly knife his head which lets us do a kick to his face. This is going to be the most common way to kill enemies in this challenge. We immediately jump out of the upstairs window, save the dog, and head to the village. Since we can't fight head on as there are too many enemies to worry about, we run around the village avoiding enemies until the bell rings. Oh, la campana. Es hora de rezar. Tenemos que irnos. Now that the villagers are gone, we run around the village and collect any healing items and grenades that we can find. Grenades are incredibly important in this challenge, and enemies don't seem to drop them either, which means we should only use them when we have to. We head deeper into the village, killing any enemies and collecting any grenades we can find, until we get to a house with a few tripwires blocking our path. Since I didn't want to waste any heals or grenades, I used a well-placed egg to blow them up. We find Luis, Sarah in a wardrobe, and once we free him, we get absolutely bodied by the big cheese. When we wake up, we have a small talk with Luis before we are forced to dodge a Ganado with an axe. Luis runs off, so we're on our own, yet again. We meet the merchant, but can't really do anything with him as all he can do is upgrade our guns, which we can't even use. So he's practically useless. Your life is nothing. You serve zero purpose. You should kill yourself now and give somebody else a piece of that oxygen and an ozone layer that's covered up so that we can breathe inside this blue trapped bubble. Because what are you here for? To worship me? Kill yourself. I mean that with 100%, with 1000%. Now we head into the valley which is one of the more chaotic places in the game as there are a lot of enemies and some of them have dynamite. I grab the first half of the emblem on top of one of the buildings and then run up this zigzag path to where the next emblem is and use both pieces to unlock the door. We head into a small building where we can easily run past every single enemy until we get to the chief's house where we get bodied by the big cheese yet again. But, since he knows we are infected by the Plaga, he lets us go. When we try to leave the house, we have to dodge around Dr. Salvador, which was just... the worst. We unlock the door to a building in the village, and on the way to the lake, we scour around for more grenades and eggs to use for later. At the lake, we have to fight one of the scariest monsters, Del Lago. This fight plays out how it always does, just throw a bunch of harpoons until he dies and somehow be surprised that Leon's leg doesn't get ripped right off. Once it's dead, we make it to land and fall unconscious. Now we are in chapter 2, and this chapter starts with our first Plaga, which we can easily run past. 
At the waterfall, we need to shoot these boxes down. Grenades don't stay in the air long enough, and eggs don't work, so we have to use our gun for the first time. After collecting the emblem to unlock the door to the church, we get to the first real boss, El Gigante. This fight is actually really easy. The knife does pretty good damage against him, surprisingly, and once the dog comes in, we can just knife without consequences. Sometimes, anyway. Eventually, after enough slashes, El Gigante goes down for the count. Now that we have the insignia, we head to the church where we find Ashley and escape just in time. Having Ashley with us doesn't really change much right now. Most enemies can just be run past, and if we do have to fight, we can make her hide in dumpsters through the village. We eventually reach the cabin where shit gets tough. The cabin was tough mainly because I didn't want to use any grenades, so the only thing I could really do was just rely on Luis to kill enemies. One good thing though, is that Luis can give you some grenades, which is pretty nice. So if I do use some, better probably gives me more. Everything is pretty chaotic until we have to go to the second floor of the cabin. Here it's a little more manageable as enemies can only come from the stairs, so while Luis is killing enemies, I'm pushing down every ladder outside the windows. If things got too flooded, I would just run downstairs to get some enemies down there and then just run back up. After enough time, the Ganados retreat. Now that that's over, we head outside and unlock the right path. El Gigante showed up, so the first thing I did was run to the end of the path and told Ashley to wait. Then I ran back, dodging El Gigante and grabbing the key and the grenades. I dodge him again, and me and Ashley escape just in the nick of time. We get on the gondola, and here the strategy is to cover Ashley and knife any axes thrown at us while knifing the guys that get on top of the gondola. It isn't too hard. It is a little scary though, because it's pretty easy to fail if you're not paying attention. We run to the slaughterhouse where we have to fight the big cheese. After five fire grenades, he goes down. We grab his eye and unlock the path to the castle. Here we have to stop this truck from hitting us, but I didn't want to use a grenade, so instead I tried eggs. Head to the castle, and now we have to destroy a gate with a cannon. The best way to do this is to destroy two of the catapults with a grenade, and then tell Ashley to wait in the safe spot. We turn this crank while dodging the catapults until we can use the cannon to destroy the gate. We run through a couple of rooms until we meet Salazar. No thanks, bro. Next, we had to fight the Garador, which was pretty easy. I just baited his stab attack, and when his claw gets stuck in the wall, we just knife the parasite on his back until he dies. We activate the switch in the room to stop the fire breathing statues, and now that they're now that that's over, we can get to one of the most chaotic parts of the challenge, the water room. The first thing I did was just run by the guys in the center of the room and run down the stairs into the back room where we have Ashley and Leon step on these switches. Then the next part was just luck based, as if Ashley gets grabbed I would just reload checkpoints as it's too frustrating to get her back. If we do make it, we run out of the room and run back in to reset the room. We get Ashley to turn the crank, and I waste two grenades getting the cultists off our backs. We run in and out of the room again, and run up the stairs until we get to a small cutscene. Once we get this cutscene, we can reload a checkpoint, and by doing this, it despawns the enemies in the room. 
We use this time to grab any items left in the room and we get a few grenades in the process. The hardest part, however, was getting Ashley to turn the cranks. It took a few tries, but it is possible to get through this. Using all of the flame grenades I had, it was possible to keep Ashley safe long enough to have her turn the cranks and have her by my side once again. In the next room, Ashley, in all of her infinite wisdom, decides to run away from us into a conveniently placed trap. What the hell, man? But at least we won't have to deal with her for a while. But we do have to deal with the Novistors, which are some of the most annoying enemies ever made in a video game. But I got lucky and ran through most of them without issue, believe it or not. Half the time this doesn't work, half the time they just grab me over and over. But other than that, nothing really notable happens other than the hedge maze, which was insanely scary. There was this really dumb part where there's this room where you have to shoot a painting. You can hit the painting with the grenade, but you have to throw it at such a specific angle. So I had to keep reloading until I got it in the first try, as I didn't want to waste any grenades for this. Eventually, we get to the room where we watch Luis get impaled by Saddler's, uh, thing, and he dies. Now we have to save Ashley from the trap, and what sucks here is that no matter where I threw the grenade, Ashley would just die. Oh, no. So, I had to use my pistol yet again. Once Ashley is freed, we have to protect her from cultists. It took quite a few tries, but I actually did get through this with only one grenade and eight flash grenades left. We reunite with Ashley and we head into the lava room where we have to shoot down these fire breathing statues. We can't use grenades, but we can run past the first two, but we do absolutely need to shoot down the third one. We get to the Royal Suite, which has two more instances where we need to use our guns. The first is where you need to destroy these mechanisms to stop a spiked wall, and the next is where we need to save Ashley from this death machine coming right at her. I tried throwing grenades, but for some reason they just don't work. Like the grenades are right under the enemies and they don't get hurt from them. One part that really sucked though, was fighting the suits of armor as they would hit me constantly as I'm trying to knife them. I would knife them until, until all three of their plog was exposed, and then use a flash. Then, the next set of nights, I used a grenade to weaken them so it would take less time to expose their plagas. It's really scary though, as these plagas actually one-shot you, and so I had to be really cautious here. But once they were exposed, I flashed them and got the last chalice I needed to unlock the door. We reach the dome where Ashley gets taken yet again. God damn it. We have to run through Novistadors to pull a lever, which sucked as they hit me over and over. Oh man. Then, we have to use our gun again to shoot down the chains holding the drawbridge as it's too far away to use our grenades. We reach the clock tower where we have to shoot three blocks of wood to get the gears turning again, and grenades also won't work because they don't stay in the air long enough. Man, this sucks. Eventually, we reach the double Garador fight, which may seem insanely hard, but it surprisingly wasn't. The first thing I did was kill the first two cultists in the room. Then I somehow got the two Garadors separated, which made taking them out much easier. The strategy remained the same compared to the f as the first Garador. Bait their thrust and then knife their backs over and over. Eventually they'll die, it just takes a while. Once we reach Ashley, we fall down into a pit which leads us to a fight with the Verdugo. This fight plays out the same as it always does, but somehow this time I managed to get him stuck, but hey I'm not complaining. 
We eventually reach the double El Gigante fight. We dunk the first one in the lava, and then we climb up this ladder. When El Gigante tries to shake us off, we jump down and knife him. This takes a very long time, but it is the safest way to beat this fight. On our way to the minecart, we have to use our gun to stop a spiked ceiling from crushing us. One of the most chaotic sections was the minecart ride, as the game decides to put two chainsaw guys in our path. I used a flame grenade to take one of them out, and a wooden plank took out the second one, and this was enough to get me through this part. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, you could turn the lovers with regular grenades, but not flame grenades for some reason. After running from a fucking mech of all things, we now have to ascend a tower by using an elevator to get to Salazar. This wasn't that bad, simply knife them in the face and try to kick them off the elevator. If a Plaga shows up, we simply use a flash grenade to kill them. We eventually reach Salazar, and you can knife the eye on his face. It's a little tough to hit properly, but it is possible. And once you hit it enough times, Salazar reveals himself, and we blow his punk ass up with the rocket launcher. Now we're at the island, which is the final area of the game, and also one of the hardest. After running around and reflecting lasers, we unlock the door and run past everything until we eventually run inside the building where Ashley is being held. After proceeding through some rooms, we have to kill some ganados on the other side of a shutter door. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough grenades to kill all of them, which is entirely my fault. I guess I used too many grenades before this part, so I didn't have enough here. I kill the first set of enemies with grenades, but I don't have enough for the second set, so I have to use my pistol. Eventually, we reach the Iron Maiden, who we need to kill to get a key card. We jump over this shattered window and bait him into, into climbing over. This gives you enough time to knife him and eventually beat him. You have to be careful though, as he sometimes will attack you through the window. We run back to Ashley and have her join us. We dodge past every enemy and jump into the trash chute. We escape from the regenerators and head to a room where we have to smash a wall with a wrecking ball. The best way to do this is to leave Ashley on the ledge where we drop down and pull down the switch while running in circles around the room. And once the ball is back in place, we run back into the room and pull the switch again. Once the wall is destroyed, we call Ashley back to us and get out just in time. The next area has two regenerators, and I actually hated this part because for some reason, no matter how much I knifed their legs, they just wouldn't fall, so I kept getting hit over and over. I still killed them, but it was just super annoying. The next room has us protecting Ashley while she drives a bulldozer through a tunnel. Killing the enemies that hop on isn't hard, just knife their head and kick them off. Unfortunately, however, a truck starts heading for us. I tried throwing an egg, which just didn't work. I tried flame grenades, which didn't work, but regular grenades do work. But the truck showed up again two more times, and I didn't have any more grenades for that, so I had to stop the truck with my gun. After we crash into a building, Sadler takes Ashley away from us again, and now we are on our own. We fight Krauser and dodge lasers until we get to U3. The beginning of this fight requires us to use our guns to shoot these green buns on the wall to open these shutters, which gives us access to a few switches. Once we activate these switches, the cage that we're in will start to fall after a certain amount of time. This isn't really that hard, as you can just run and tank all of U3's attacks. Once we get to the last cage, we manage to escape from U3 just in the nick of time. U3, U3 isn't done with us yet, however, as now we have to fight him head on. This is way easier than I thought it would be, as you can easily just dodge its scissor like appendage by just running to its side, 
which gives us plenty of time to knife him again and again. After this encounter, we get to fight Krauser, which went as well as you expected. Now we're in the final stretch of the game and we only have a few more parts to get through with one of the hardest being the trenches. The first part of this section is fine as you can run through mostly everything, but with the parts with the turrets absolutely sucks. I was just getting shot over and over and I found it surprisingly hard to outrun the turret fire as there just isn't much room to do so. Thankfully though, I had enough healing names to just tank through it, but it was still really, really frustrating. The army base could have been so much worse, but the one Ganado holding the keycard jumped down to where an explosive barrel was, so I was able to get through this part pretty fast. Once we save Ashley and cure ourselves of the Plagas, all we have left is to fight Sadler. The first thing I did was use all of my grenades to stun him, which allowed us to jump on him and get a few stabs in. Then I used the two switches on the side of the arena, which would slam steel beams right into him, and this would stun him enough for me to get even more stabs in. Then, all I had left was to slash the eyes on his body. Two of his eyes are the perfect height for slashing, so we can easily stun him with those two, but his other two eyes are a little more tough to hit as you have to be at a pretty particular angle. But with enough time, I did manage to take out his last eye, which gave me the win. With Sadler down, we make our way to the jet ski, get on, and escape right before the island explodes. And that is the end of the challenge. This was a fun and challenging run. While I couldn't beat the game without guns, I only needed to use them around 10 times. I feel like with better play I could have reduced the number of times a little bit, but I'm still happy with the results of the challenge. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider liking and subscribing, as that motivates me to make more videos like this one, and I will see you in the next video. Later.